Landon McCarter with Secure Agent Marketing again, bringing you an insurance marketing show that we do weekly. We appreciate you guys joining us again. Um, I really, really am excited about search engine optimization for a couple reasons. Um, I know that there's a shift coming in the market. Um, right now, digital marketing is taking a lot of market share from traditional media in general in the insurance industry. Um, I know this because we spend a million dollars a month on digital marketing, uh, whether it be Google, YouTube, Facebook, um, Instagram, you know, what landing pages, whatever, just in the insurance space alone. And so I am seeing a shift go massively towards social media. Well, what's happening is, is because this massive shift is going towards social media, there's actually a opportunity because everybody's focus of digital marketing is now social which is driving up costs, it's diluting the lead quality, there's some issues going on with that. So on the flip side, what we try to do is we try to kind of go in a different direction as the crowd and we've kind of figured that, figured that out a little bit, it's a little bit of a waltz. Not to say that social media isn't where we're going, not to say that we're not doing that like the rest of us, but there's opportunity that is um, other places as well besides social media and that is, in my opinion, search engine optimization. What is search engine optimization? Obviously it's getting your website found on Google to get an organic uh, ranking, to get passive lead flow uh, into your business to where you don't have to pay per lead, but you're getting passive lead flows throughout the month. Also what's happening is, is the industry is shifting to less face-to-face, -face, less walking into the insurance office and more telephone sales, doing multi-state, getting your license in multi-states. So what happens is, is you're kind of fighting the uh, what's you, if, if you're face to face with somebody, you have an opportunity to impress them. You have an opportunity to show up sharp, to basically you know show up in a nice car, whatever that is. Um, and then, but with digital and with phone sales, you kind of have to like really exude that that presence as much as possible. And a lot of people, what's happening is they're googling the company that you're with. They're googling the carrier you're talking about. They're googling you as a person. And if you don't have that brand figured out, and if they Google you know John Jacobs. Uh, Springfield, Missouri, and you're not on the list with a website, it's going to hurt you. You're going to get less. You're not going to really realize it, but less people are going to do business with you because of that, I promise. So what I want to do today is spend a little bit of time. One, I'm going to go through about 10 to 15 things that is search engine optimization. All of these things you could probably Google and find mountains of information. Um, just as a quick plug, I'm going to be doing a master class um, December 4th. Uh, there's a link in the description below uh, for you to be able to check out that master class where I'm going to teach this stuff for two hours. I'm going to go through the tools. I'm going to get everything um, where I'm going to teach you how to do this as opposed to just talking about it right now. But um, there's a lot of you guys that are interested in kind of hearing some of this stuff and uh, probably a lot of you guys that are doing some of it but not all of it. So I just kind of want to walk through uh, those specific points. So the first thing that I want to talk about with search engine optimization that is an important factor is what I would call premium hosting or like your hosting environment. Your site speed, you got to make sure that your, you know, Google will ding you for having slow site speeds, slow mobile site speeds. And the, the way that you set up your premium hosting is actually important. If you just go for like the cheapest, you know, website that you pay $49.99 a month or whatever and they stand up a website, I guarantee you that hosting package that you're on is poop and you're gonna, Google's gonna basically ding you for not having a good hosting environment. Overall, so you know, we, we've set up our stuff in uh, WP Engine and some other hosting environments that are you know, top tier. We don't do the cheapest hosting uh, environment possible, right? And that's something that does matter to Google because they're the ones that are sending traffic to your website and one of the first things they check is who is this hosted with, what are the credentials, and that leads into the next thing which is SSL certification. So there used to be sort of a myth that only SSL certification uh, mattered for e-commerce specifically. So it's not necessarily true anymore. Uh, you need, what will happen is on the left bar of the, of the search um, of the, uh, where the URL is, it'll say not secure. That's just like, a, I mean just think about the perception that that brings with it. If you're going to the website and it says not secure, you know, you're gonna have this perception that, oh, this guy, who is this guy? He's not secure, you know, what's going on? And a lot of our clients are older people. Um, and if they see not secure, it kind of has a tendency to kind of freak some people out, even though they don't know what that even means. And they for sure don't want to put their credit card in. But if they're putting their email address and trying to go through our lead forms through gated content or reach out to us directly by calling the number on the deal and they see not secure, that's gonna hurt you. Google knows that, so they count that against you as well. So with any good SEO strategy, the next thing that you wanna make sure that you do is anybody can you know, shoot an arrow at the wall, walk up to where the arrow landed and draw a bullseye around it, right? 
That's not what we're trying to do with search engine optimization. We're trying to do keyword research to make sure that we know the target that we're trying to shoot at. You may think keywords um, just kind of come to you on what you would Google yourself. You need to really do some keyword research to figure out where the actual search volume is on Google. So there's lots of tools out there. I'm going to go through some tools um, on my masterclass that we use that are free to do all the keyword research. So you want to make sure that you first understand which keywords you're going after on a search engine optimization strategy because if you don't know where you're going, you don't know what to you know, create content about, you don't know how to structure your website, it's not, um, it's not the, the ideal situation for sure. So you know, that's an important thing is that keyword research. So the next thing you got to make sure you do is you know, Google ranks websites um, predominantly, I wouldn't say predominantly, but well, yeah, I would say predominantly based on the amount of content. So I don't care how good your SEO is on a five-page website. A 20-page website on the same topic is that structured correctly with SEO is always going to outrank the five-page website. Just think about it. If you're a user, Google wants to send their users to good educational websites. If Google identifies this website as having five pages of content on a particular keyword and this website of having 20 pages of content on a particular keyword, which one has more domain authority, do you think? Obviously the one that has more content. So you need a good content strategy. A lot of people don't really understand like how to structure that though. A lot of people think that that means just building a website and then putting a blog feed and just creating all these blog content. That's not how you do it either. There's all kinds of ways to screw this thing up. So um, that's, that's the main thing is to have some sort of a content strategy. Then you gotta make sure that you're doing something all the work that you're doing, you got to have a way to track it. So you want to have an independent source that tracks leads, clicks, bounce rates, content, captures which blog posts are your popular ones so you can create more content around that. Um, different markets, different areas have different hotspots um, for different keywords. So if you are able to create a big library of blog posts, you can actually see which of your blog posts are getting more traffic, more attention, and driving those leads into your overall website that way. Um, so in order to track that, you have to have Google Analytics set up. Okay? Google Analytics is free uh, to set up. It's not rocket science. What is a little more difficult, though, is setting up the goal conversions and the lead form captures and all that stuff. Um, but just getting analytics on your site is, is not that hard, and it's free. You just have to have a login, set it up. It's not, it's not rocket science. So the next thing while you're doing analytics is a, a tool called Google Webmaster Tools. Google Webmaster Tools is basically the interface that Google gives us as uh, owners of a website to look at how Google is seeing our website. That's where errors come up. That's where Google gives you your sort of uh, information to say, this is what's wrong, this is what's right, this is what you're doing good, this is what you're doing bad. Um, also, that's where you submit your site map and you basically are able to, with Google Webmaster Tools, that's the interface that we have to tell Google how to crawl our website. If you don't use Google Webmaster Tools, you're just waiting for the search engine robots to crawl your site and just kind of do a lot of guesswork, which is not how you want to approach uh, in this digital age. You want to make sure that you have a good foundation set. So that I already touched on the site map as well. Um, now, the next thing you got to do is if you have your content structure figured out, you've got to make sure that your on-page SEO is, is fixed. What that means is, is you got to have your page titles, your meta descriptions, your H1s, your copy. You got to look at your keyword research. You got to make sure all of your meta data is set up correctly on the existing pages and all these blog posts that you're creating. You got to make sure that you're adding the right keywords and structuring that correctly with the sitemap that was talked about, etc. But you know, the main thing is, is your page title um, is if you were able to go up to the tab on Chrome and hover your mouse over the tab that you're on, a little rectangle will drop down and it'll give you the keywords that you're focused on. If you don't put those into Google specifically, then Google will guess for you. I can't tell you how many times I go to a website and the, the page title is home and we're an insurance agent. You know, why would we want home as our number one keyword that we're going for on our homepage? That's silly, right? The reason is because no one went in and set it up. So you're never going to get ranked ever, no matter what you do, if you don't have the correct, correct metadata built out. Um, the next thing uh, that you got to do is go through and make sure that you have all these directory listings sorted out. So every mention of you or your business on the internet needs to align with the phone number, description, address, etc. If there starts to be a bunch of different versions of your address, a bunch of different versions of your name, a bunch of different versions of all these different um, you know, mentions of your business that are saying it's here, no it's there, no it's here's the phone number, no there's the phone number, they do this, no they do that. Google sees that as inconsistent and they actually ding that uh, against you. On the flip side, if you have it all set up correctly, 
not only does that bring you inbound links, it also gives you authority with Google as well because it's all consistent and it's more trusted basically. So that brings me into sort of link building. Link building is still a thing with, with search engine optimization. It's not near as important as it once was. Link building used to be the actual SEO strategy that we all used, which was called the link wheel. So you had your, you know, your main website and you had your different websites that you would link to. And Google would look at all the links to a website and give domain authority based on that final site that was being linked to because, well, if a lot of people are linking to it, then that site must be uh, you know, the most authoritative on this particular keyword. Well, Google realized that people started to gain that system. And so they, they, links are still important, but it's not as important as it used to be. But you still want to try and get some organic links if you can, whether it be through PR releases. There's plenty of uh, press release, you know, uh, systems that you can submit a press release with your link and they'll give you a link and there's social links you can do. Um, but the direct listing also will get you those links as well. The only thing I don't love about link building is it's hard to like, the, the, Google is getting more and more they don't want you to buy links in any way. And so if you have any system that's sort of selling links to you, it, you can actually get in trouble by buying links big time. I've had to have clients, you know, Google has like a naughty corner that if they catch you doing things, it's called Black Hat SEO, they'll put you in the naughty corner and they'll take you off their search engine altogether. Um, so the last thing that I want to kind of go through is some sort of ongoing review system. Um, Google does look at reviews and the star rating of those reviews embedded in your website as a indication of performance. Um, it's weird how they do it. Um, it didn't used to be a thing, but Google realizes that consumers use review star ratings and reviews and amount of reviews as a point of authority, as a point of um, basically a website that has 50 reviews on it means that it had 50 customers um, come in and, and pay attention enough to, to leave the review. So Google actually does look at that stuff. You've got to set it up correctly, um, but it is, it is important to, to, to look at. Um, and then you really just at the end of the day, if it's, it, it may seem overwhelming, but it's all a project that you can kind of work on and move towards. So there's always a next level to get to a search engine optimization. There's always the next level to actually uh, arrive. And what you'll find with a good uh, social uh, search engine optimization strategy is that over time you'll get increased traffic. You'll start to get lead flows. I can't tell you how many customers I've helped where they've had paid ads and search engine optimization. So they get your paid ads driving the leads and then you've got your search engine optimization. Finally, they catch up and then cut the paid all together. Um, that's happened, I mean, more times than I can count. I've done millions of dollars of search engine optimization over my seven years of digital marketing. And that's like our biggest win is when we can basically say, you know what, we used to have to pay 10 bucks a click just to get you know, X amount of clicks. It would cost us X amount of dollars. Now we're getting that amount of clicks organically. Let's cut the paid all together. Um, just focus on sort of lead development over here, but not usually use Google paid tools any, any further. Um, but on the flip side, by the way, Google does use AdWords data, conversion rates, et cetera, to give you authority on your website as well. So one way to get a, boop, a bump on your search engine or, um, optimization rankings is to have an AdWords campaign with decent conversion rates driving traffic to your site because Google does look at that information as well. Because they'll say, wow, you know, here, they're paying $10 per click you know, they have a 10% conversion rate on this particular landing page. They must be an authority on this particular keyword and they do bump up your domain authority by doing that. So um, guys, I would love to kind of teach you more about this with actionable steps of how to execute this yourself. Um, it's not rocket science. I can get you, you can even do this with your own Wix and, and Squarespace site. You don't even need a WordPress site to do some of this stuff. So what I would love to do is invite you guys to our masterclass that's going to be happening December uh, fourth, and you will see the link in the description below and we would love to see you guys there. I'm going to teach you all this stuff. It's going to be a two hour. I'm going to record it. I'm, if you sign up for it, I'm going to give you the recording um, and everything is going to be sort of laid out a little bit more simply in steps. We're going to take more time to unpack each of these things and walk through all of them together. So thank you so much for your time. It's really not as mystifying as people think. It's really just a matter of work ethic and executing and creating content strategies. And, but, but, but most importantly, making sure it's structured the right way so that you're building authority towards the keywords that matter. That's, that's what SEO is basically. So thanks for joining us. I look forward to seeing you on the masterclass. Also, you can reach out with the link below, start here. If you want me to do a site audit and look at your actual search engine optimization of your site, if you're interested in working with an insurance professional to help you with your search engine optimization. Think about this, guys. If content marketing and content, that means writing custom content, you want an insurance professional, an insurance only person that does only insurance marketing to be writing the content for your insurance website. Trust me, it's, it will help. Um, 
So anyways, thank you guys for joining us. We will talk to you on the next time.